the law of liberty. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There are none righteous, no, not one. But here it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. If you trust in Christ for salvation, you're already righteous. You are saved. It's done. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. Your name is written in the book of life. It seems to indicate here that we obtain faith righteousness even before the confession. Some people will say, if you didn't say a sinner's prayer, then you are not saved. Other people say, if you compel someone to say a sinner's prayer, you're adding works to the gospel. I want to tell you they're both wrong. They are both wrong. We are saved by faith. You say, well, if we're saved by faith, how do you balance this? Listen to this. Romans 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. When we're accounted righteousness by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, all of our sins are forgiven. This verse could not be any more clear that we are saved at the point that we believe the gospel. We're saved by faith alone. But then something else happens. Then we get to the second half of the verse, and he says, and with the mouth... What's he say? Confession is made unto salvation. Well, now, wait a minute. Do I have to pray a prayer to be saved? If, if, if you came to me and said, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that he died for my sins. I don't remember the moment that I prayed. I don't remember saying a prayer at the moment that it was preached unto me. Does that mean I'm not saved? What is salvation? It's trusting in Christ, isn't it? At the moment that we believe the truth of the gospel, we are made righteous by the blood of Christ. Salvation is from the heart. It's not just from the lips. It's not. Yet, I believe that you should call upon the name of the Lord. I believe every Christian, if I, if I just saw a raise of hands, I said, who has called upon the name of the Lord? Everyone that's saved will say, well, of course I have. Amen. Of course I have. It only makes sense. But there seems to be these two camps where one person says, don't you dare have them say a prayer. And the other person says, well, if you didn't say the prayer, then you're not even saved, putting confidence in the prayer. They're both wrong, according to the Scriptures. Salvation is of the heart. In 2 Timothy 2, he says, of them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. How do I get a call on the Lord out of a pure heart? This is a warning about some that profess Christ that are not saved. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Here's the warning. There are those that will come in that will say, I believe on Jesus. I've called on the Lord. I've said the prayer. But in their heart, they don't believe. They're not calling out of a pure heart. Their mind and conscience is defiled, and it will become evident. And this is an example of somebody that has the profession, but they don't have the faith. They're unbelieving. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven? Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. There are many people that have said a sinner's prayer, and they're simply not trusting Christ for salvation. Being saved is not reading a 33 word prayer off of a card. That is not how you go to heaven. You have to understand and believe. I had a guy one time years ago, 10, 15 years ago out soul winning, he had a phone in his hand and a beer in his hand and I, I knocked on his door and I said, what do you have to do to go to heaven? He, Just pray the prayer, man. Just pray the prayer. That guy was not saved. I went to church, I prayed the prayer, I'm good to go. His confidence was in a prayer, it was not in Christ. So there's a problem there. And we deal with that problem by thoroughly preaching the gospel and making sure that we're clear. Saying a sinner's prayer does not save you from hell, faith saves you from hell. Romans 10 is telling us, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. This is a man that is saved without wording a prayer, but something's happening in between here. And I'll just tell you, the Holy Spirit moves in and indwells you and helps you to not be ashamed. Helps you to call on the name of the Lord. Makes it easy to have a confession. Galatians chapter 4, look at verse number 6. And because ye are sons, 
God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now, how do we become sons? To them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Well, now that I believe, He sent forth His Son. He's inside of me. Why? So I can confess the Father. Confess the Son. Matthew chapter 10, he says, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Listen, when the Holy Spirit works inside of you, He will help you to say things that are beyond your pay grade. Much smarter than you would ever do. The Holy Spirit can work through you, give you the power of righteousness and holiness in His Spirit. Romans 8.26. I, I want you to see this very similar thing. Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Spirit itself make it, helps us make that confession. Does that make sense? I'm not saved as soon as I word this prayer. I'm saved when I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I believe if you really are saved and you're trusting in Christ, the Holy Spirit's going to help you make that confession. And every one of you that's been out soul winning can attest to this. You start talking to somebody, what do you have to do to go to heaven? Be a good person, go to church, keep the Ten Commandments. Oh, can you name the Ten Commandments? Nope, can't name them. Okay, are you 100% sure you're going to heaven? Uh, maybe 75. Okay, so you're 25% you're sure you're going to hell. Somebody starts off like that, you preach the gospel to them, you give them the verses, halfway through you're like, you see how this is different? Yeah, this is different. You start getting them to that point of decision, and you're like, so according to the Bible, what do you have to do to be saved? They're like, just believe on Jesus. Is that what you believed before? No, that's not what I believed. Do you believe this? Yeah, I believe that. That's the, that is a profession. That is a confession. That is them saying, hey, I believe on the Scriptures. I believe on the Lord. His promise is true. My opinion was wrong. Thank God I see this now. And you begin to hear a confession. Corinthians 4, the Bible says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. How do I know what you believe? The fruit that comes out of your mouth. How do I know what you trust in? The words that you say to me. But how does God know? He sees your heart. You cannot just word a prayer to God and lie to Him in your heart and cheat your way into heaven. The sinner's prayer in that regard does not save. However, there's nothing wrong with bringing somebody to a point of decision and helping them verbalize their first prayer to God as a Holy Spirit believer to confess the Lord Jesus Christ as their God and Savior. In fact, I think that's scriptural. Somebody sent this verse to me. You're in Acts chapter 10. I want, to, I want you to see this in verse 43. Somebody sent this passage as a rebuttal saying that they were saved before the prayer. There's no need for a prayer. But let's look at it in context. Acts 10 verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. That's the message preached. All you have to do is believe. Verse 44, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell upon all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost coming inside of them, that's evidence of salvation. Check it out. They believed. The Holy Spirit came in. Well, where's the sinner's prayer? Somebody said they sent the one verse. Let's keep reading. Verse 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak. What's the next thing? They heard them speak. The whole point of speaking in tongues and acts was for preaching the gospel. It was this proclamation. And here we are. They believe. The Holy Spirit comes in. And next thing you know, they hear them speak. It's coming out of their mouth. Acts chapter 2 says the same thing in verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. What's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? He will stir you up and He will give you words and it will come out of your mouth with great boldness. I believe salvation happens at the moment that you believe. You become righteous before God. Then He sends the Holy Spirit inside of you and helps you call upon the name of the Lord not just once in a sinner's prayer but for the rest of your life you want to know how, how to have a powerful powerful prayer life humbly ask the Lord for the power of his spirit in your prayer when Abram called upon the name of the Lord it was not for salvation he was already saved when the gospel was preached in Christ he called on the name of the Lord in front of his family he brought them to the house of God they called on the name of God they prayed and gave God the glory so listen don't let somebody talk you out of 
saying a sinner's prayer or compelling others to save a sinner's prayer. It's not that. It's not those words that make somebody saved. It's their heart condition with Christ, believing in Him alone for salvation. The Holy Spirit moves in, and you'll know when you begin to hear it out of their mouth. That's how it works. There was somebody a while back that just, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to pray with people. I'm just going to, you believe this, you believe this. Okay, you're good. That's not right. We compel them. We persuade them. We uh, uh, confirm them, the Bible uses. We check up on them. We ask them questions to find out what they believe to make sure, as it says in 1 Corinthians, that they have not believed in vain. We want to help them put all their trust on the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to call on the Lord out of a pure heart.